Welcome everyone to Great Lakes Power Stroke. This is going to be a quick review of the Athlon Argos. What is this, the Gen 2? Um, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, you can read that. This is an 8-42, uh, and this is my Razor HD, um, which is a 12-50, to 50, or 12 by 50 millimeter objective. So, number one, I got these because they were on sale. And I wanted to try another Athlon product. I have, uh, or I had two at, or, um, Argos PTRs on rifles, one of which was on a 6.5 Creedmoor that I just didn't warm up to, and my buddy was looking for a longer range rifle. Um, so I sold it to him, and he wanted to have it as a package with the rings and the scope that I had on it. And so unfortunately, I lost one of my Athlons. Um, well, I mean, we worked out a fair deal for it. It just, it was a nice optic, and it's nice when you own nice optics. So, uh... I want to give it another Athlon a try. So I saw this one on sale, and uh, it looked very attractive, and it is very attractive in person. It is much smaller than the good old Razor. It is also much lighter, and that is why I got it. Number one, at closer ranges, uh, 12 power is a bit excessive. Um, I really got these for basically scouting and um and basically glassing large areas um that were open and one of the things i noticed when i took these hunting this past week was they're heavy well i knew that but they're a little much for close range if you were trying to glass ahead only a couple hundred yards you're giving up a lot of field of view whereas these being only eight power definitely allow to have more so this would be what i'd use for 250 yards and in that's what I'd use for 250 yards and out, in my opinion, and also that is what I'd use to go hunting with, and we're going to see how tough they are in the field. Um, now, real-world comparison. So, like I said, that's the Razor HD, and that is 12 power and 50 millimeter objective, and these are 42 millimeter objective and 8 power, so right there the Argos is down um, quite substantially in terms of power and in terms of how much light they can gather. Now I'm looking forward to see how they do at night to compare the two, but I'm in the daytime. It is overcast today, um, but it is daylight. And I was just looking at, I just checked the range with my Leopold. It was uh, 229 yards on a mailbox and I was able to um, basically read the numbers on the mailbox at 229 yards with the Razor. I it was clear as day with Argos, but the problem was I just simply didn't have the definition to be able to read the numbers. So there you go. 12 power, 8 power, 50 millimeter, 42 millimeter. I can tell you this, though. At 229 yards, you could see what gender a coyote was. So, you know, obviously at 229 yards when you're hunting, you don't care about what numbers you see. But... Um, what we're trying to do is see how many points a deer or an elk might have, um, potentially the gender of a species that you're after. Um, and I can definitely tell you that the Argo stands up remarkably well to the Razor. Um, I am definitely partial to my Razor because I like it, um, but its weight and its size and being 12 power was what led me to give something else a try. Now, I am planning on adding a BX4 guide series or whatever the heck it is, Leopold, to the arsenal, probably in 10 power to split the difference. So that way we'll have a bit of a spectrum. I'm all for more power. More power is great. But when you're trying to zoom in a long ways, more power, I'm, I'm sorry, when you're trying to get a wider field of view, um, more power is not necessarily what you want. But these are some very attractive um, binoculars. They look very nice. Um, they're very light in comparison. I mean, it's not half the weight, but it's, without having a scale, it's probably three quarters of the weight of the razors. And that's what we're looking for. So I think that this is a good compromise. So far, I believe that they, the glass is incredible. Um, I'd like to look out a little farther, especially if I could look out in some animals, because obviously when you're looking at deer, sorry, or you're looking at an elk, um, there is a difference between looking at a mailbox. So I'm looking forward to see how they perform, and I also am looking forward to how they perform opening, more, like, daybreak and nightfall. Those are two times that are definitely hot for hunting, and uh, you definitely don't want to fire a shot at something you can't tell what it is. So one might use binos to not only sex the species, but um, 
know what they're shooting at in terms of its relative size and uh, potentially the rack. Um, it makes sure that you're not shooting something you shouldn't. And sometimes rifle scopes don't allow that simply because you might be hunting an area where you might be using iron sights or you might be using low power optic. Or maybe you're a hunter that is using, uh, like my buddy, a 1960s uh, uh, lever action um, Marlin with a two and a half power, oh, what the heck scope is that? Light field? I don't know. It's his grandpa's rifle with his grandpa's optic. And it is a good optic. I've shot it at 200 yards all day long and held a pretty decent group, but it doesn't compare to at daybreak being able to, see, to very, very keenly make out what you're shooting at. So it's definitely good to know what you're shooting at, and uh, so that's something that optics can or um, binoculars can help with. And that way you're not pointing your gun at things when you don't know what they are. If something's approaching you, you don't know what it is. Could be a human, could be a, uh, a coyote, could be a wolf, could be a bobcat, um, or it could be something you can't shoot at. Or maybe you don't want to shoot at, maybe you want to evade it, a bear or whatever, whatever. So instead of pointing your rifle at it, you could use binos. And also too, you can glass forward as you're uh, stalking. You could move very, very quietly, very slowly and watch ahead with the uh, binoculars and see if you can walk up upon. There's, you know, obviously different ways that you can hunt. So um, that's why I got to try something different. And so far I have very high hopes for this uh, binocular. So uh, I will keep everyone posted, but I guess this is the initial review and I suppose the well, first time I've seen it. It is a very attractive and light. Came with a strap and it came with a decent final bag. And the Gore-Tex comes with the same Gore-Tex bag as, you know, even a lower level Gore-Tex, so keep that in mind. Uh, now, I'm not super in love with the bag. I did have to send the first one back because this ripped. It looks like it might try to do it again. Look at that. So something to keep in mind, they use the same pouch as the smaller ones, and when you have such a large optic, it puts more stress on the closing mechanism. So I might have to do some modification of my own, or just send it back to them and have them replace it, which is unfortunate. I just noticed that. So keep that in mind. These guys are using a Velcro setup, which obviously I think is going to be more reliable than that. Now, you would really mostly transport your optics in these. I don't really think you hunt with the, I mean, I, I do, so I've been meaning to get a better method of carrying said um, binos, and that is coming. But for right now, I, I have been using this setup. Um, I would not take this setup hunting. I put these binos in this pouch for it for now. Because this is not really, you know, we're not bird watching here. We're not going to whip this over our shoulder like a handbag. So anyway, thank you all for tuning in to this very quick unboxing. I will have a couple pictures of when I initially got the package. Um, it was packaged very nicely, kind of like you might see in an Apple product. So that's pretty cool if you're into, you know, the initial aesthetics. Um, I'm more into final function, so those are great. But honestly, I'm pretty pleased with the final functions. I think it's perfectly clear. I think that the, the zoom of this one is perfectly appropriate for the intended purpose. And um, I, I'm very pleased with the clarity of the glass, especially comparing something that is a whole lot more expensive. I, if I remember correctly, I got this on sale for less than two bills. That does not compare very, you know, similarly to that. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're looking for a budget option that I don't think owes any at least so far, I don't believe it owes any uh, any uh, apologies to this guy. So, definitely a interesting development, and I'm looking forward to seeing how these hold up in a harder environment. These have been clunking around my center console, um, and they've gone on many hikes. Uh, I'm sure they've been dropped in the pouch. I don't think I've ever dropped them outside the pouch, but um, yeah. So, quite pleased. And if you're in the market for these, at least so far, I'd say you cannot go wrong. But I think Athlon is really killing it in a lot of different uh, fields. Supposedly this is a, if I'm not mistaken, I saw a Gen 2. So it must be a Gen 1. I'm curious if you guys have a Gen 1. What looks different? Is it, um, I mean, do you have the same thoughts or experiences that I do? And if you own this set and you have an opinion on how it's doing for you, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. So thank you all for tuning in and have a great day. Please like and subscribe.